A lot of my really good friends are in here. Thank you guys for coming. And then uh, everybody else too. <laughs> and uh, and this, is, uh, this is the third one I've been to, this Creative Mornings, and it is really cool. And I think Robbie was the, uh, the one that got it started, maybe. So thank you, Robbie. Um, it's cool that Orlando has it, because if you go to the website, and look around like it's mostly like big like crazy cities that are awesome and not that Orlando's not but it's just I think we're very fortunate to have this this going on and so anyways I kind of uh, made the uh, keynote and I'm gonna have it drive my there's my name this is Danny Jones did that um, here we are so this is where everything began for me um, not kidding. Uh, I was always a creative person, I think, but like, I never really pursued it. And then, uh, and then I got Mario Paint, and uh, this is the first time like a lot of us, I think, used a mouse. Did anybody have this? Anybody in here? A few? Okay. So you guys know. Anyways, I got really good at drawing on the Super Nintendo with the mouse, and just really good at it, and it changed my life. And uh, just hours, hours on end. Um, wrong way. But then I'd also doodle a lot. I'd make little things in school, and I was that kid that could like draw Bart Simpson really well, so people would come over to my desk and they'd be like, draw Bart doing this. Uh, draw Bart ollieing over a trash bag or spitting on some other kid. So I would do that, and then I'd have like a little crowd like watch me like draw his hair. And, uh, so it's pretty popular because of that. And then uh, I think I Googled doodling, and then I found this little thing, which is super true. Like, I was always, I think, I think I have serious ADD or something. So whenever someone talks, like if I'm drawing something, I could listen much better. So anyways, like I'm always daydreaming and stuff like that. So if I'm like kind of drawing, you know I'm listening to you. There's some more little things I just found. I'd make these little characters and stuff. Just, uh, I don't really know. This guy was kind of a reoccurring character. Um, I called him mailbox head, even though he's a, a milk carton head. I would always get confused. So there he is with the plain arms again. Those whales are like looking at him. Um, so then in college, uh, just like all of us, I think you kind of are lost for a while. And you're like, what am I doing? Like, I don't really know what I'm doing. The first two years are weird with the gen ed stuff. And um, I remember learning about this guy, I think it's pronounced Sartre, Sartre, the existentialism guy. Anyways, um, there was this thing he said, like, you are what you do. And for some reason, that always stuck with me, especially at the time, because all I was doing was working at an insurance company and like answering phone calls. I had a little headset. And, uh, and going to school, and I was like, man, like, I'm just an insurance company. Like, this, this isn't cool. And then I was just going to school, too, I think, because I had prepaid college. So I was going out of guilt. I was never really into it. I was like, man, it's paid for. Like, I should go, you know? So I was like, what is my thing? So I started kind of this journey to try and find out what that was. And I knew I was always kind of a creative person. Not that I was, like, really good at anything, but I love to create things. And I think that's what a creative person is. Like, you don't have to be good at it necessarily, but you enjoy just the process of making it. And then once you've made it, you look at it and you feel good about it. And then you go back to being tortured again and then you, until you make the next thing. So, and that kind of is the same way it is today too. But um, another little hobby I had was going to thrift stores and finding these like, this is 2001 or two, by the way, going to thrift stores and finding these like really tight, vintage t-shirts that had like rock and roll stuff on it or said like Joe's ice cream or whatever so I would find all these things and then I would stockpile them and then I started to sell them on eBay and make some like pretty good money for just finding things in a thrift store so then I would just do that all the time 
I would go to the thrift store with a headset on, like jamming out, like just looking for t-shirts. And I would do this like five days a week, like no kidding, like it was crazy. So I started to sell them on eBay because I couldn't wear them all and make money. And then I was like, you know what? I bet I can just make my own t-shirts. So then I was like, well, I need a logo. And uh, my roommate at the time was like, why don't you use that crazy picture of your dad you're always laughing at? So I was like, <laughs> I should do that. And here's the original photo, but I like did some awesome Photoshop filter on it and made it like look like Banksy kind of. So, and here's this really crude website I had made. And there's one of my old friends. Um, this was one of the little designs. Thank you. It was just a thank you bag. So it's not really my design. I basically stole it. But uh, that was a big seller. And I made all these little, again, this is like 2002. So um, here's some more little, little designs I had made, which I thought were amazing at the time. This is, this is the time when, like, if you had something funny on your shirt and, like, a beer in your hand, you were, like, really cool, I think. This is a girl's one, so you can tell. Um, I'd also do, like, stenciling and, like, put this little, I call it, it's a chuck head. That's what I would call it. My, dad, my dad's chuck. So I'd stencil it on things, and I'd make them into little flowers or something. So then I was like, oh, I must be, I'm, like, a, I'm a designer. I must be a designer. This is, like, my thing. So this is my first, like, oh, uh, yeah, I must, I must want to make uh, stuff. So I was like, yeah, Chuck Designs. This is terrible. Um, I'd, and I, I was just, I'd find old Polaroids and my dad, like, half naked on the beach. And I would just write design under it, Chuck Design. Um, so then I, like, made, like, weird, I didn't have any clients, obviously. So I'm just, like, making stuff and writing Chuck on them, you know. And I'm kind of trying, I'm figuring out, like, compositionally what I like and colors and stuff, like, who knows how long this took, how many Photoshop filters, but eventually it's that, and somehow the eyeball came out, and I had a scanner, so I'd scan in paper and stuff. Um, this is like one of my friend's band. I don't think they ever used these, but I would make band posters, you know, it's really weird. Oh, I did this little, check this out, this little emo art kind of stuff. Um, that's a heart, I don't know if you guys see that. So, so um, and I would, I would paint and do some like mixed media things. Apparently I had some like love troubles, looks like. Um, that's game, that's Chuck on a Game Boy. So then um, I was in beginning electronic media class or something and then I was just killing it, doing all this stuff. They were like, wow, you're so, you're so cool with your creativeness. And, Cause I was always better than everybody else, but I don't think I was good. I just think everybody was really terrible. And then, um, but I made this film, and I decided for the tone to be kind of really sad, and the music was really sad. I like used some Mogwai track, and when I played it for the class, like, and then the lights came back on. I look back, and seriously, there's like seven people like crying, and I like feel like really weird, and it like really affected them. And I was like, "This is awesome! I just made a bunch of people cry. Like, oh, I really like that feeling." So, uh, the professor actually put it in an art show. This is at USF. Um, put it in an art show and then people then they're like oh you're the you're that really sad video guy like are you okay and I'm like yeah I'm good I'm super good like did it make you cry I hope it did um, so then I was like well it was kind of a crossroads that time in my life and I was like there's nothing at this college USF that really I want to pursue there was like a design program but it was really weak and I was obviously kind of nobody was hiring me to do anything except like my really good friends who wanted a website and it, Anyways, so the closest film school was UCF. So I, so I came on over here and applied. And uh, during all that, I actually bought this little guy, which, uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, which is a little SLR. It's like one of the beginner SLRs. It's like our Canon Rebel kind of thing. But it was an Olympus, which was really good because, um, because of this website. So. I'm in Orlando, I'm driving back to Tampa on the weekends to work at my call center job with a little headset. And I'm just obsessing over this site, um, which is a really lame like looking site. But what's special about it is uh, it's for people that only have the kind of sensor that's inside that camera. So it was a small amount of people. So I'd say like 500 maybe active members. And you can only post a photo every 24 hours. So this, then this is what I would do. but 
what's great about this community that it's actually even hard to find now is you can post, I was posting my work here and these guys, these like mostly old men were like ripping me apart, like saying like, this is complete garbage. Like, what are you even doing? Why did you even take this photo? Like, I don't even understand. Like your highlights are gone. You're, it's un, it was either over or underexposed. It was never right. Like, why is it like Dutch angled? Like, anyways, you could, uh, you can, when you posted a photo, you can give the level of critique you wanted. So I'd always put like, let me have it basically. And then probably three months, three months of just posting every day, I like learned so much on like the fundamentals of photography. Granted, it was from these like 70 year old men, but they like loved to like tear me apart slash help me really. So this is pretty much like photo school for me as far as like the fundamentals go. And, uh, it's still up today, like you can go look and see what I'm talking about and now there's a lot more cameras with this type of sensor inside of it and it's always kind of like a special, a special thing in, in the story of, uh, of my development as far as photo goes. So this was, the next, this was the next thing where I kind of started to leave the site because I found these little guys that my friend showed me. He's like, dude, like, you can take these and attach them to a flash and move the flash over there and you're here and you take the photo and the flash goes off and then like just blew my mind like the, you can just create light from anywhere and there's no wires so here I am like every every chance I get I'm like running around like I think this was actually a Christmas when the Wii first came out and my friends are there playing and I'm like have my camera set up and I'm just like shooting the flash at things like seeing what it does you know I'm like what if I aim it at here because um, really I didn't have a mentor or anything at the time. I didn't know anybody who was doing photo or doing like lighting, off camera lighting kind of stuff. So I'm like learning everything just by like failing just constantly and going out and spending hours making garbage. And it's really, really bad. I was going through hard drives to get some stuff for this and just embarrassingly bad. So here I. <laughs> So in the apartment at the time, I'm like, oh, I need like a studio. This is going to be cool. So I'm like setting up paper backgrounds and I'm still like going to the thrift store, mind you. I'm like obsessed with it. So I pick up like this weird projector thing and I'm like, I bet I could shoot a light into that. As you can see, it's not going off here. There's some kind of problem. Um, and there's a green screen. I don't know why I even needed a green screen. I just thought I did. So I bought it. And then these are just some neighbors, crazy neighbors I had and being sexy. Yeah. Cole was there. And then, and then this fellow came along, um, Danny Jones, who, uh, who I met through uh, Cole right there. And because uh, I had done this like weird fight club photo shoot where I had first met Cole and he was like the star of it. And I was like the fight club guy for a while in Orlando. But then Danny found me and he's a, he was like an established designer here. He was doing lots of work and he started to bring me in on projects. And I was just like, this is awesome. He wants to pay me $500 to help him like take some photos of some band guys or do some concepts and stuff. So we were doing like, this is one of the first things we had done. Yeah, we tried to find like behind the scenes these type of photos before they were like photoshopped to hell. Um, here's one of my friends dumping water on my, we couldn't afford like talent so we ended up using like me for some stuff. Which I don't know if I would do now but back then I, I was okay with it. Um, here's that same couple again helping me out. This was like a bef this was for uh well there was the after image too but Robbie left it out. This get this this gets taken out all that this little elf guy. Um, <laughs> so fast forward a little bit I start making some stuff and then I end up getting a photo rep because I'm like oh that's what you have to do you have to get like a photo rep and then you start getting all the big jobs. So I uh, contacted a few people and this lady was really interested in me and she was really sweet. And I think that's why I ended up going with her, because she was really sweet, which was probably a bad idea. Um, her logo was weird, but so forth. And this is what she called my photos most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> she, she'd be like, you know why you're not working? It's because your photos are just of sad people sitting on beds. And I was like, but it's awesome. Um, so... Here's like some of the stuff I initially created to kind of make the style that I have now. And there's the actual sad, that's my father too. There's Chuck still here doing his thing. But there he is sitting on a bed and he does look sad. 
Um, that guy looks pretty sad, too. I think it may have been, she's kind of happy. I think it may have been left over from the video I made where I just wanted, still wanted to make people cry. I don't really know. I just don't, I don't want people smiling and stuff. She's really sad. Um, so anyways, fast forward a little bit more. I was at Universal Studios, which I'm never at, but I remember this, and I got a random phone call, and it was from an agency in Seattle, and they were like, hey, are you available for this date, that date? We have like a Microsoft photo shoot, and I was like, oh, yeah, 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 and my like heart's racing, and I'm like really nervous, and I'm like, oh crap, like what do they want me to do? This is nuts, like I'm so scared, but excited, and that's a lot of money. Like, they basically just laid out how much money they had, and I was just like, Pfft. like, what? You're kidding me. I'm rich. So, <laughs> so this is what they had me do, and I don't think I've ever posted this anywhere because I don't really like it, but I did get to use my green screen that I had. <laughs> um, so what the job was, and it was weird, and it's also kind of embarrassing, but still, is... These are the Microsoft like security team from like all over the world. And they were having a convention here because that's what big companies do in Orlando. They have conventions and they party, whatever. And then, um, so these images, they're all in kind of bond garb and glasses. I was supposed to, they would walk into a room and there would be like four different like background plates. Some with like cars exploding, some with like people escaping buildings that were exploding. There was always exploding stuff. and. Like, stuff, they were doing stuff like that. Um, so I would try and light them with, like, what was happening kind of with the light behind them. But it was really weird. But then it ended up not really doing that to where I would just try and light them how they looked well lit. So I had just, luckily, I had just gotten into using grids, which I like grids a lot, which they kind of focus the light into a small area. Also, like, a snoot kind of does the same thing. So I would just shoot a tons of grids at these guys, and some of them looked pretty cool, and then some of them just weren't attractive at all. Like, some of them was like, you know, there's just no way this person's going to be a spy. But you would, that's just how it works, so you'd have to make it happen. And then here's, like, here's a, oh, yes, satellite. Um, the explosion. So I'm, like, making fun of myself as I'm doing this, but I don't care because the, there was a lot of money involved. And... Um, but afterwards, they hung these up. There was like 200 of them. They hung these up, and then you'd see the little like nerdy like internet guys walk in there, and they'd be like, they were like blown away to see themselves looking like super cool on a poster. And like I was just sitting in there, and they were like, come up and they'd thank me, and they you could tell they were just so excited to see themselves like looking super badass. So it ended up being like a really cool experience and a really cool job. And the agency ended up hiring me like more and more to do like more ridiculous stuff. It was always really, really bad, but um, lots of money. Lots of money. So, yeah, a lot of people are always coming up to me like, hey, man, like, you haven't updated your site in a while. Like, what's up with that? Like, and the reason is because, like, a lot of the stuff really isn't worth showing. Like, a lot of it's just smiling people on laptops or looking at phones and it's just kind of like regular stuff. Like it doesn't really match kind of what I have going on. And I've always sort of struggled because right off the bat, I made like a certain style on my website. And it's like I never get hired to do that. So my rep was right. I don't get hired to take photos of sad people on beds. Like it just doesn't happen. So I'm kind of always in this sort of pickle where it's like, man, I established this. I never get hired for it. But you know, I have all these other projects, so I try to like mix it up and update when I can, but a lot of times it's really just not worth putting up. So that's something you look forward to professionally shooting, as a lot of us know. Look at this guy. So if you Google bag of tricks, like this image comes up, <laughs> which is, I was really excited about. And uh, this is something that I always kind of relate to a photography career is like, after a while, you have just this giant bag of tricks that you can go to. You know, you walk into so many situations that are just so bad. You walk in and you're just like, serious. I gotta walk to my car and get some more stuff, you know? And then you go out there and you're just like, oh man, this is, oh, this is gonna be terrible. Um, so you're like, okay, well I'm gonna do that thing. That thing that always works, the thing that always makes people happy. Because that's all, usually what you're trying to do is you're trying to make the client happy. If you can make something cool for yourself, fantastic but rarely is there a case where you can. It does happen. 
So I'm always getting just like these tricks that I'll do and they're kind of just like go-to's and it kind of just automates the process. You'll walk into a room, you'll be like, oh great, it's garbage again. I guess I'll use trick number five because people love that. Like I've done it a million times, but I don't show it so nobody knows. So you kind of just sort of keep rehashing the same tricks. Um, so that's, that's what I do and I think it's what a lot of photographers do. And the longer you do your trade, the more you screw up, uh, the larger your bag becomes and the less you screw up. This guy, I just took this the other day on a job with this gentleman here, John Deeb, whom I never really had a mentor um, until I'd say I met him. And uh, he's been doing what he does here in Orlando for a while. And uh, I started assisting him. And I'd say I assist him probably 80% of the time. And, and then I shoot the other 20% of the time my own stuff. So most of the time I'm hanging out with Deeb shooting. And it wasn't until I met him that I actually like learned just like tons and tons of stuff about lighting, technical things, like uh, how to do business, huge, huge shoots, like big stuff with like 25 people all like for this one scene. A lot of times I'm sitting there going like, why do we need all these people, Deeb? And, but he makes great products and it looks awesome and he keeps getting hired and very, very successful and I, I love the guy. And here, that's me. This is actually our friend Wes, who also helps Deeb a lot. I just thought it was cool. You could see them in the glasses. Not that cool, but here's a, this is cute right here. <laughs> I'm actually standing in testing some stuff for one of Deeb's. It was the AIDS shoot that he did. A Faces of AIDS. It sounds weird if you just say AIDS. Uh, but I took a photo of him. And here we are uh, at Nemours Hospital in this, these outfits, which is fun. This is most of the time what I do on Deep Shoot. I just stand and, and just make fun of him, and he makes fun of me back, and there's always large amounts of gear. That's usually how that goes. Um, so yeah, that said, you can read that, so. Got it? I mean, I guess. It was like at 2 a.m. last night, this morning. Um, so then I put all these people that I've met, there's you Cole, that I've met that have kind of like helped me along the way and always kind of championed me and what I do. And there's a bunch more too. It's just, I was really tired last night and I'm just like, this works. That's kind of a cool photo of that person. Couldn't really find this guy, but there's me with him. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really all about the relationships. Like no matter how good you are, it's like, it's more about the people you meet and, uh, and, how they decide to talk you up and then say, even if you're not good, you know, they're like, oh, he's the best, you know, even if you're, you're not the best. Okay, yeah, this is good. So staying inspired when you're like busy working all the time, because remember, like this became, as, as most creative jobs, it's a hobby at first and it's a love, and then you turn it into a business, and then sometimes you're kind of like, just kind of feel sad about it because you don't really do it like you used to. So it's like I'm always finding little mini ways to kind of keep the spark alive. So there's all these little fun little things. And this is what I call the funsy camera, which I try to take with me all the time. Even though the iPhone works pretty good now, like it's pretty solid. But I, this is the camera that I always recommend to everybody. Deeb actually has a better one in his hand, but it's far too expensive. Um, <laughs> And this, is, this has kind of been lately, just like all of us, this is kind of what I've been doing lately. It's, it's really cool, especially now that they fixed the terms of service thing, because that was really weird. Um, I was doing this for a while, not as much anymore. But, you know, it's just these little things you can kind of, easy ways to stay creative, finding scenes and just being like, oh, that's cool, I still got it. And then posting it up and, you know, getting responses and whatnot. So I use a lot of those. And then like personal projects as well. All the, oh yeah, that's you. All the, uh, all the stuff that I feel like I get most of the response from is uh, from people is the stuff that I'll do like on the side, which it's hard to find time to when you're like working and staying busy and trying to have a normal life. But um, the mustache stuff that I did with Danny it's probably the most well-liked and people are like, oh, I looked at your mustache photos and just peed my pants. And I'm like, great, that's cool. They are pretty funny. 
Um, so if you get a chance, you can go check those out. There's a section on my website. And then this is a Danny project, too, that we did. Pretty much anything I'll do with Danny is just always the best. He's such a talented individual. And uh, the grain and gram thing that uh, we, I want to say, used to do together, we try and keep it going, but we're just so busy. Um, lots of street cred for that, I would say. Lots of people are like, oh, grain and gram, yeah, I haven't heard of you, but I've heard of that. Um, so that's really cool. And this was traveling, traveling as well. Um, take so many more photos when I'm traveling. I feel like if I'm home in Orlando, like I look at everything and I'm like, I don't want to. but if I'm somewhere else and I see like a hill that you don't see in Orlando or a mountain, I just like freak out and I become inspired and I just take so many more photos. And uh, yeah, I guess I'm, I got really tired, so I could have kept going, but that's all I have for you today. Thanks. And there's the Chuck again. So. Okay, well, uh, we're going to have time. Stay, where are you going? Okay. We have time for some questions, so why don't you guys ask John Paul some questions? He'd love to answer them. Like his favorite F-stop. Favorite F-stop, yeah. F2, actually. I was thinking of even that tattooed on me, F2. Like right here. I'm not kidding. Okay, anybody? Anything? Yes. You know, I, I actually tried to keep it alive for a while, and uh, sometimes I'll go back and I'll like do little things, but it's just, I think after meeting so many talented friends that do that, like uh, even like Greg right here, like just meeting people that are amazing designers and amazing illustrators, or Ariza right here, um, I, there's, to me there's just no point, like I have to just, I'm just going to concentrate on what I feel like I'm sort of good at you know, and spent so much time doing. I do love doing that stuff. Uh, I have been interested in writing, because I used to try and write. I tried everything. I would just throw stuff against the wall and see what stuck. Um, but I think I would be interested in something like that again. So I've kind of returned. I write little poems sometimes, stuff, and I don't know. I like, uh, I, like I don't want to say reading books, because I listen to them. But I always try and find authors that have sort of a poetic writing style. And I'm really impressed by that. And I think I'd be really interested in pursuing something like that. But not doodling as much anymore unless it's seriously just doodling. And then I just toss it in the garbage. So if that answers your question. Thank you. Um, not while I'm shooting, but like while I'm traveling. I travel a lot with Deeb or we'll be in the car or something. So or more so on the plane, or in the car, we're actually laughing and joking and farting and stuff. So, but um, I, everyone's farting on the plane. <laughs> Even if they say they aren't, they are. But um, I like the classic authors more. I like Hemingway, I like Henry Miller, um, some newer authors, but anybody that has sort of just a poetic writing style where I can, like, I guess kind of the stream of consciousness where you just like, they're just letting it flow out and I'm like, it just kind of gets me and I'm just like, eh. But I use the uh, Audible, it's audible.com. So great. It's kind of expensive, but um, the customer service is really good. I'm big on customer service with things. Uh. <laughs> yes. Um, that's an interesting question. You know, I get, I get really stoked on like uh, personal projects and stuff, but sometimes I do get really down that I just have a tough time finding time to do them. So I really, I do get stoked on jobs a lot, depending on, it's just a lot of times the jobs really, they really are work and they're, it's not an exciting subject. So, um, and people have told me that, I'd be like, man, like you have the awesomest job ever. Why do you seem like whatever about it? And it's not that I'm like whatever about it. I'm a really happy guy and I feel really fortunate and lucky to be taking pictures for a living um, or doing lots of video too. And uh, I don't know. I think, I, I think I'm lost now with the question. I don't think there's a modern version of Mario Paint. I still like to play video games a lot. That's pretty exciting. Um, but no, I, maybe not. Yes.
Yeah, I'm, it's weird. I'm like, I'm good and bad at it, I would say, because I, I'll meet people and I think they'll like remember me and they'll remember me as the sad people sitting on beds guy and they'll, you know, maybe I'll keep up with them, but I'm, I'm good at making relationships. I'm hard at kind of like keeping the fire alive between them. Like I'll work for a company for a while and then I'll just kind of like fade away and I won't talk to them again. So my advice would be don't do that, you know? <laughs> like for example, like Deeb just bought all of his clients Christmas presents. Like I didn't do anything. I just, <laughs> you know, so he sets a much better example than I do. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one of my, the business side of it I really struggle with sometimes. I'm good at like doing internet-y things and Twittering, um, I think, especially because I don't really like to Twitter, -er, but I'll do that and I like to post photos and kind of interact online and, and stuff, but, but yeah, so I guess I didn't give you any advice except buy, buy your clients Christmas presents, not yours because you have a job, but real job. Anything else? Yes. Um, it's funny because, I mean, I don't know anybody else like Deeb in my life, so we met, and he, we live in the same building, and that's kind of how we knew each other. Um, but he was scrambling, as he usually is doing, because he's really busy doing lots of work. And he's like, oh, I think he was just like, oh, there's that shooter guy upstairs. I'm just going to send him to do this thing that I have no time to do. So he sent me off to do this Florida Film Festival job, and, uh, of course, I just was like, it was like a farmer type thing, and I was like, well, my dad has many horses, and he kind of lives in the country, so I like went out and just shot like some little videos of him, and uh, I think like really helped, helped the project, and then after that, we became really good friends, um, but mentor-wise, mentor like I think I'm very fortunate to have found Deeb, because he's been doing it probably twice as long as I have, maybe even more, plus like I think he has more history with cameras, and then he interned in advertising for a while, so he kind of knows these, these alt alternative sides to it. Um, again, I think I'm just talking and getting lost, but. No, no, it probably took us, we were living in the same building for like a year before like we finally started hanging out, because I think, you know, he's not the most approachable, I don't know if I am either, who knows, but just eventually that much time passing each other in the hallway, dragging camera gear and just being like, oh, you do cameras too, cool, you know. Plus you never know if it's like there's that rivalry type thing. Like I'm very not, I don't want to say competitive, but I'm very like, oh, you're a photographer, that's awesome, more power to you, there's lots of work. And he's kind of the same way where like, you know, there's, there's been jobs we've bid each other against and uh, it's pretty funny, I won't go into details. Um, Yeah, you could say that, so, yeah. Oops. I didn't. No, I dropped the heck out. Um, you know, for photographers, no. Mm -mm. I don't think it's, mm. I think you should go to that internet site that I put up. But for filmmakers, I think I think it's, it's pretty good um, and helpful. And I learned a lot of the... The most I learned from the UCF film program, I was only in it for like a year and a half, but they forced you to watch art house films and films that you normally would, like 10 minutes in, you'd be like, you know, you wouldn't watch it, but they, they forced you to watch them. And then after you watched two dozen of those, you're like, wow, these are crazy, amazing and influential. And I think filmmakers are more inspirational to me than other photographers are. Um, who asked that question? Oh, that was you. A collab, col collab. So, so yeah, that was the greatest thing about film school is like forcing me to watch um, just a bunch of art films that normally I would think like, why aren't these people talking? Why are these long pauses here? Like, what's this is this is terrible. But 
once you actually force yourself to sit through them, you're like, it's like you find out, you're like, oh, it's you're in the secret club of like art film where you're like, no, it's actually amazing. Like, wow. So even still, I'll try to like find something like Criterion, like all the Criterion stuff. I think that they're in the know on that stuff. So you can watch one of those and just be like, wow, I feel so inspired and cool to understand this and whatever. So. Yeah, my four thirds. They took the four thirds logo logo and flipped it upside down, and then it looks like a my. Fun fact. No, there's not. There's not, and but the thing is too is they're real. They used to be a really tight knit community. So I'd have friends who were normal people, had like Canons and Nikons and stuff, and they'd be like, oh, that website you post, I'd, I'd talk it up, and they'd be like, oh, I want to join, but you can't. You, have to, you had to have an Olympus, but now um, more cameras have four-thirds. Uh, the little funzy camera I use, the Panasonic, um, it has a four-thirds sensor, so you can post all those images there. You don't have to have a lame Olympus anymore. Like, it's still active, yeah. And all the old guys that were there when I were there are still there. And they're still posting landscapes and birds and just all sorts of architectural, like all the hobby stuff that you'll see, like they're posting it there and they're talking about it like in-depthly. You know, because if you post a photo on Instagram or Tumblr or whatever, people are just like, like, like it, it's good. You know, but like if you go there, they're just like, I feel like the background, I don't know, you could have, they'll even give you post like, stuff like I would have taken out the bird second to the right you know and, and then you and then you'll look at it and you'll think because like it's not it's not often you find a place where people give you some serious critiques on your photos so that's why I feel like it was like advanced photo school and you can go in there now and type in my name and see the junk I was posting and then you can kind of see when I started to leave too if you look at the dates it's so whenever I started doing like strobes and stuff because they aren't really doing that there that I'd post something and they'd be kind of like what you know so I started to go look at like strobist and all the other little online off-camera flashy sites um, but yeah I, I feel really lucky to have found that site and just happened to buy that camera to where I was an accepted member um, there was a camera called the Olympus E1 which was like legendary back in the day it's like a five megapixel like tank waterproof not water almost waterproof and that's what these guys all used and I don't know why and I don't know who told them to buy that because it was a completely new technology system or whatever. But the promise of that system was that everything would be smaller. And it eventually did happen. It just didn't happen until like a couple years ago. So now if things are, the micro four thirds is what it's called now. So, yeah. I think so too. Like communities where you're straight up asking like seriously, don't just say you kind of like it or don't say anything. Tell me why you don't like it. Tell me why I suck. Like, give me some, give me some tips because there's not a lot of, lot of communities like that. So, yes, Christopher. Oh yeah, definitely, most definitely. I mean, Deeb's a great example of that. I mean, I still work a lot and make a living here, but yeah, that's, it's the whole like big fish, small pond situation, as people say. There's not like a lot of, lot of photographers here. Like I think two of the five I know of are sitting in this room. So there's, there's not as much work, but you'll still probably work more if you were here as opposed to going to LA or going to New York or, or whatever, just because there's so many and so much more competition. Um, I would say. Now I say that having, I moved from Tampa, so that's, I can't really tell you. I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe I could move to LA and be amazing. Who knows? I don't know. So that's my input. Yes. Uh, 5D Mark III. Yeah. Bag of lenses. Same thing everybody else is, I feel like. Except for Deep Deep has like a million cameras. It's kind of, we kind of just give you cut the other crap all the time. That's what we do. Yes. Right there. 
Uh, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm a, chi I'm a Mario Paint kid. Like, I'm t the first camera I bought was digital. And I've experimented with film. I bought this really cool Contax, like, T2, like, slick little utilitarian camera. And then I was in Germany with this guy right here, and I just, he was playing to, like, 10,000, 100,000 people on stage, and I think I was all excited, and I just left it on, like, a speaker. So that was the end of that. Um, <laughs> And then I had like another film camera and I think it's awesome and I think I, I've always been like, oh, I'm gonna get a medium format and go like do that but then I'm really lazy at the same time and I think the effort involved in it is just a little much. Like I'm waiting for like an affordable medium format kind of thing to come out before I go that route because I'll look at things I'm getting from the 5D and you're just like, wow, this is crazy, you know, like the stuff you can make with just a full frame digital cameras insane so but I, I really appreciate it and I do like it a lot and I'm always like if somebody's just shooting film and getting awesome results I'm always like man that's really cool like I like that yeah thank you, thank you.